All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I am your host, The Wolf of Crypto. We are tuned in to another episode of the Crypto Podcast. Got a very special guest that's joining us here today. His name is Miro, and he's actually going to be helping us and talking, discussing about this project called. I'm actually not too familiar with it. It's a brand new project that's going to be coming up on my list right here. And excited to share this with you guys. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get a little background for our special guest, Miro. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself, about what we're discussing today, about the project a little bit. Just give us like a little teaser. So I definitely got some questions lined up here for you. Because like I said, from looking at Neon EV, EVM, it looks definitely interesting. So give us a little intro about yourself, man. Yeah, hi James. It's definitely a pleasure to be on your podcast. So my name is like you said, Miro. I'm a integration developer at Neon EVM, and basically my daily job is to make the transitioning of developers and projects as smooth as possible to our chain. That's the main thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, as far as your guys' project, could you give us like a overview of neon evm and how it addresses like the blockchain trilemma of scalability security and decentralization so first yeah that that's the truth we are new evm basically which means that we're the first evm on solana what does this mean basically we managed to store the entire evm into solana basically our evm inside solana is represented as executable logic or in simple words a program on solana mm -hmm. how was this possible basically it's because solana comes with a lot of benefits and one of it is that it allows us to store a bit more executable data compared to other chains for example you can store up to 10 megabytes inside a solana data account and the evm itself has a size roughly of somewhere around two or three megabytes so it's totally it was totally possible to store the evm inside solana okay wow awesome 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 that's some really good information now could you give me a little insight on what inspired the development of and how does it differ from traditional ethereum virtual machine implementations what inspired us is the current existing problem of Ethereum with the high costs and the, mm -hmm. a bit slow finality. Of course, there's a benefit in Ethereum and there's also a huge benefit. So basically, our core idea is to combine the benefits from both worlds and both worlds and to provide them to the developers, to projects. So uh, we currently do have a Ethereum RPC API, which like mm -hmm. any other EVM is listening for incoming Ethereum transactions and the API is processing them in a way where we do have operators which are taking these Ethereum-like transactions and processing them to Solana. Of course, there is incentive for the new operators to do their job and this is part of the fee which was used to sign the Ethereum transaction in the first place. So basically, in simple words, you can say that we do run Ethereum-like transactions on Solana. And the benefit from this is that on Ethereum, you have way more developers compared to Solana. So there is a lot of, a lot more, a lot more tools, products that are built on Ethereum. But Solana has the benefit of parallel execution and cheap and fast finality. So we try to combine these two benefits of, of the both networks. Got you, got you, got you. Now, you did drop that there were some incentives for being an operator because I did see that on your guys' website. As a proxy op operator, you'll play a pivotal role in transacting, processing, and earning NEON tokens. So I'm assuming that NEON token is your guys' token for the platform. Could you just go a little bit over what are some of the ways that you guys do get incentivized for becoming an operator and just dive in a little bit of if I was to become a proxy operator or if somebody else is out there watching and listening and wants to become a proxy operator, what are some of the benefits from that besides just getting the uh, NEON token here? So currently you do have the option to run the proxy, the our NEON EVM proxy on your side. Mm -hmm. But currently, it's still not a wide open process to, to it's, there is a still whitelist, but we're looking in the future where we will have many operators and they will be like competing one another to basically process the transactions. So this is currently the status. 
Okay, you said it's going to be a whitelist to become uh, an operator, you said? Currently, yes, but soon we look to remove it, yeah. Got you on that one. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, what are some advantages that Neon EVM is going to bring to developers and users within the Solana ecosystem? Okay, so let me start from there that we do support, for example, the most of the Ethereum stack for mm -hmm. Solana, like for example, the programming languages, Solidity, Viper, every time there is a new Solidity compiler version upgrade, we try to immediately synchronize this inside our EVM. We do support the most famous wallets. You, sh you, you should know them like such as uh, Metamask, Wallet mm -hmm. Connect, Web Out, Ledger. Mm -hmm. When it comes to coding frameworks, we do support Hardhat, Foundry, etc. We do have our own instances of subgrab, Gnosis Safe Fork, which also enables the option for developers and projects to run their mm -hmm. own multi sig wallets. So basically, like I said, if you're a developer with Ethereum background or any other EVM background, we try to make the migrating process for you as smooth as possible, where just by the changing of your RPC URL inside your project, mm -hmm. it will be just enough to start uh, testing and deploying your smart contracts on our chain. Awesome. Now, I did see that you guys have a governance DAO, and I'm a founder of, of DAOs because I actually just joined a Jupiter's DAO. And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far, and it's very uh, incentivizing. And haven't really got to dive a little bit deeper into your governance DAO, but if you could just give us a little bit of an overview, if there is going to be any incentives for people that are participating in the and then also too, right now, is your guys' DAO live or is it in the process? So if you could just cover those questions right there for me. Yeah, so currently our DAO is still in the buildup okay. about incentives. I cannot fully confirm, but we're looking to have this live uh, pretty soon where once deployed, the DAO will be owner of the most of of all of the decentralized projects, factories of contracts, stuff like that. So everything, so every time there has to be a change, it mm -hmm. will go through governance and the community will have the last voice about it. Awesome, awesome. Now, as far as the NEON token, is this token already dropped? Is this still in development? Could you walk me through your guys' plans for your guys' token? Like where do you guys see it in the next month or two at the launch? The token is currently live okay. and it's being traded amongst different set of exchanges about purchasing it. I cannot give you financial advice. <laughs> yeah, of course. No financial <laughs> yeah. advice on the podcast. Here, yes, folks. yes, yes. Everybody do their due diligence. Always, I always say that, especially when you come into the crypto space. Okay, so the token is live. It's a, it's on a couple of... Yeah, but we definitely don't, do not, uh, currently we do not focus that much on the price. We focus on the project and building of the projects of the ecosystem. Awesome. Which, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's going to obviously, if you build it, they will come. And then as you guys start to really crack down and hit your guys' goals, I'm pretty sure that's going to help the project in the near future. Now, what are some of the primary challenges faced by you know, traditional blockchain networks in terms of scalability? Because I'm, I, I want to say you went over that a little bit earlier. If you didn't, could you just address how it is going to address? Because when it comes to scalability, especially from the space and from what I've read, that's been like one of those main objections uh, that gets in the way of some of the projects out here. So as far as your guys' token or excuse me, your guys' project, how are you guys going to really uh, address those challenges so currently when it comes to the typical evms they have an issue currently with the transaction throughput and currently it's important to mention that we're the first evm which is executing a transaction in a parallel way mm -hmm. this is mainly possible because we're on top of solana our settlement layer is solana and solana has this feature called c level mm -hmm. which is basically a parallel smart contracts runtime what c level does is it's sorting all of the transactions and instructions by program ID mm -hmm. and run the same program over our accounts concurrently. So one simple explanation of how parallel processing is working is basically, if, let's say if we have two transactions inside the mm -hmm. same block and they're trying to update the balance of the same address in the typical like Ethereum, the second mm -hmm. transaction will have to wait for the first one to be processed because Ethereum is running in a sequential order. But on our chain, this will be executed 
in a parallel way because thanks to this feature called C level. And important to mention is that one uh, key thing that makes uh, the parallel uh, in, uh, po possible on Solana is that before executing a transaction, mm -hmm. you have to provide a full list of all of the accounts that will be included inside the transaction. This also helps for conflict detection and in general, parallelism allows for multiple transactions to get executed simultaneously, which, mm -hmm. which increase the transaction throughput. And this is a current issue for the other projects. Got you. Well done. Explain. Hopefully you guys got that because, again, this is some technical stuff that we are discussing here today. But I did see your guys' ecosystem. It has a couple of different applications within it. I saw a faucet as well. Could you just briefly give us an overview of the ecosystem and how users that are coming to the platform can kind of interact and engage? Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. So basically, in parallel way, next to the uh, mainnet uh, chain, we also do support the DevNet chain, which uh, we take care uh, like uh, because the, the DevNet is a very important step for the newcomers, new projects, new developers, and uh, the faucet is basically uh, helping you to get some test tokens on our DevNet, where you can basically start playing around with your smart contract, your project, and so on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I also did see that if people want to come on the platform and add their DAP, you guys are accepting applications. You know, if anybody's out there that's watching, listening, that actually decides that what they see about there, you know what, this might be a place where I can go ahead and bring my DAP over here. Could you walk us through that process? Like, how long does it normally take if somebody like me or somebody out there is bringing their DAP to the platform? Could you walk us through that process and what that looks like? So first thing we would advise you to go through our documentation because just last few weeks, we were trying very hard to make the documentation as easy as possible for newcomers. There it's basically everything is there. So if you want, for example, to run a token, which is supported on both chains of new and EVM on Solana, there is a very detailed uh, documentation pages about it. And for example, if you also want to list these tokens inside our native bridge, which is called Neon Pass, there is also an open procedure how to do that. It's just by making a GitHub PR. And basically, once approved, we can accept your token inside our bridge. Got you. Because I did see the Neon Pass that you had mentioned. So... This allows us to go ahead and basically transfer tokens between Solana and Neon EVM, correct? Correct, yes. Awesome, awesome. And now, how do you envision the evolution of dApps operating seamlessly across multiple change? And what are the key components needed to achieve this? So currently our focus the last few months is about cross-chain interoperability. For example, we already did some, we already did work in that direction where currently it is possible to read Solana data from a uh, solidity uh, mm -hmm. level on new EVM. And this is how we basically do support PIT and Chainlink integrations. We do not have PIT and Chainlink like deployed inside new EVM. We just read the price feeds directly from Solana. Mm -hmm. The next big step would be beside reading data is also to write data. Mm -hmm. and. Currently, we're trying to push this out hopefully next month or two, mm -hmm. where basically once this will open way more options for dApps to grow even more. Like, for example, one use case would be a DEX aggregator such as OneInch, mm -hmm. basically crawling through DEXs on both chains of UniVM and Solana and trying to find the best swap outcome for users. Once this version is out, which I'm sure it will be out next one or two months, we will start exploring the other way where uh, Solana programs can, can also look into writing data on new and EVM. Mm -hmm. And uh, the aggregator on Solana, such as, for example, can also look into the swapping outcomes of new and EVM and, of course, help the users to get their best swap outcome. Of course. Of course. I like that. Now, could you discuss some like very specific use cases or even some scenarios where Neon EVM parallel processing capabilities have demonstrated significant improvements in scalability? 
Yeah, I would say the TPSP that we currently have. I think the last count that we currently had in our tests is somewhere around transactions or something like that. I might be wrong about this number, uh-huh. but it's thanks to this option that I mentioned earlier, C-level on Solana, we are able to process transactions very quickly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I did see that you guys are going on to the three-day hackathon. In- Was that correct? Yeah, currently our team is right now hosting a three-day hackathon at DJ Seoul. And yeah, basically looking for the best DApps creator on our chain. Okay. So everybody that's out there might be watching, listening, and wants to go down, or it might be in Korea, Seoul, Korea. If you guys want to check out the EV, Neon EVM team, they're definitely going to be down there. They're going to be down there for three days. Definitely want to try to, if you have the opportunity, go ahead and meet those guys because from what we've been discussing so far, it seems like this project right here is going to be one of those ones that's going to break through and it's going to have a name for themselves. So again, fans out there listening, watching, just keep that in mind. Now, as far as some potential barriers that might exist for achieving real-time cross-chain interoperability, how can projects like Neon EVM overcome any of these obstacles that might come in the near future here? Like I said, the current version of interoperability that we're looking with Solana will not be the perfect one. It's like the first version. So yeah, once out, we will see what are the current limitations. For the, We will ask for developers and projects to share this feedback, to try out the version. Then we can really measure what are the current downsides of that version. And mm-hmm. we will work on the second version to yeah to make it even better. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So... What are some trade-offs that, if any, that developers need to consider when building on compared to like traditional Ethereum or Solana environments? I would say currently it's not the trade-off, but we currently support only legacy transactions of Ethereum, but we're looking until the summer to support also EIP-1559, which will allow the gas changes inside that standard. Yeah. Okay, cool. So developers out there that watch and listen, keep track, make down some notes there. Now, looking ahead, what are some of the next milestones or developments on the roadmap for Neon EVM in like the next, I would say, time frame, I mean, we're three to six months? And how do you foresee its impact on obviously the broader blockchain landscape? I would say as a first focus is currently the interoperability and then the second one which is ongoing since the beginning of the projects to get even more and more partnerships and the big names that deploy on our chain. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, <clears throat> people that might be out there that might be looking for a partnership, Neon EVM is definitely looking for some more partners. So again, if you guys are trying to connect with this project and their team, definitely be on lookout for Neon EVM. Make sure you guys check them out i'll definitely leave yeah, some oh go ahead just to mention about the potential new partnerships we have a very solid bd team which will contact you and make the process as smooth as possible okay awesome on that one so we're gonna pretty much be wrapping up here pretty soon like i said i was just loving the website when i first came across it, it seemed very technical but as i'm talking to you i get a little bit educated on the platform and definitely the tokens as well um and then becoming an operator that seems like something that might be actually rewarding and then definitely will be looking forward to you guys once that's actually up and running and live um and then as far as these different tools that you guys have the hard hat embark remix foundry ape rock chain ide solidarity and viper now i'm not too familiar in this realm when it comes to those specific tools could you explain a little bit what do these tools do how is this uh benefit yeah sure so most of these they're mostly a tools for developers to deploy debug play around with their contracts for example through hard hat and founder you can test your contracts in other on different circumstances basically because as once deployed a smart contract if it's not upgradable it has to be a bulletproof so we try to enable the options for developers to so they can test their contracts as much as possible so they can provide a bulletproof code to, to the user base mm-hmm. got you on that one now as far as security i think that's something that People always have in the back of their mind how secure is the platform. You guys, obviously, you guys run some audits. Could you give us 
an overview on some of your guys' security features and entities that are involved in the auditing and attesting to its validation? Yeah, sure. So I would assure you that we do have uh, multiple audits. We have ongoing aud audits even now. Just last month, we made a, a even better version of the factory, which is deploying tokens on both of new and EVM on Solana. And this mm -hmm. contract is currently on audit and we are waiting for the audit partner to come back with a feedback. Mm -hmm. Once everything is clear out, we will on, on, only then we will represent the code and provide it to the community. Before that, it's private, not sharing it. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, do you see any like potential risks or threats to Neon EVM that can seek like to migrate through its architecture and security measures? Currently, there's always a risk for these things, but we do have a very strong uh, monitoring and audit. So we do, it's not something, it's not like you make the audit today and then you just take a rest for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. You're always on watch for potential bugs and issues. Got you on that one. Now, as far as the speed, because I did see you guys have a pretty good speed when it comes to transaction perspective, and obviously depends on Solana's load and transaction type. I saw that you guys actually recorded like a groundbreaking record back in December, surpassing like the combined average of transaction per speed on the entire ecosystem. Yeah. So once again, this all of this is possible because the parallel execution. If it was in sequential order, we wouldn't reach that much of TPS. So yeah, uh, during the test, uh, I believe that different set of proxies were used, mm -hmm. but it was a really achievement. Now, I know as far as the governance, I know it's not really live yet. Is there any way you can give us an idea when that might be live? Because I know there are people out there that are constantly always searching for because they feel that it's always very rewarding because even from my experience of Jupiter, and this is just recent, they just did a launch pad, they did a vote. And I want to say two of the projects got obviously selected and now everybody's really very excited because with them they know that if you're a token holder a voter you're going to be getting some of those tokens wherever that project releases um as far as your guys's dow i know you said earlier you say you don't think it might not be as incentivized um, but just as far as it being live do you have an idea if it's going to be two three months down the road that hey we can be able to go to neon evms start participating and being involved in the community and stuff like that? So in matter of fact, I was just talking about, about I was just talking with the team that is currently managing that. And uh, I believe there are the final changes and I believe we should have that live for somewhere around the summer. Yeah. In the summer? Okay, awesome. So keep that in mind, folks. That should be live in the summertime. That's going to be, again, really exciting to see. But... I think that's going to wrap up my questions, at least that I have for you on, on Neon EVM. Again, you have explained everything pretty well, got me a little educated more on interpolability. And as far as people that are developers out there, I think this will be a platform that you guys can find yourself really being able to progress and see any problems that you guys are struggling with or facing right now. Neon EVM might be one of those options that you guys want to come over here, come test out their ecosystem you want to come test out their depths i mean guys again this is something that you guys want to keep in mind on now as far as neon evm i know it is like i said one of the first ones to be on the solana how long have you guys been around yeah so our main it is live since last year's summer okay and yeah all right all right now like i said you are a guest here on the show i'm gonna go ahead and give you some time if there's anything else that if I didn't ask, or if there's something that you want to go ahead and mention about your project or just about some upcoming updates, some things that people that are listening, watching that should stay focused, might want to go ahead and follow your guys' Twitter, your guys' social media. I'm going to give you this time to go ahead and discuss so anything else that we might not have already covered in the show. I'm going to give the floor is yours at this point. Yeah, definitely. So two important things to discuss is that just to repeat for the community, new NVM is the first and also the first 
EVM that's executing transactions in a parallel way. So guys, this year we will be full with updates from our team. Just like I said, uh, like, like Lee also mentioned, currently our team is uh, in ETHCU. Just next month I will be attending Dubai Hacker House. Yeah. Okay. S subscribe to our socials and stay in touch with the current updates that we have for this year. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're going to Dubai. That's going to be fun. Make sure you guys, if you guys are following them or if you guys are in Dubai, you guys want to go check out the team. You guys can go out there and do that. As far as you guys' social media, you guys' community, are you guys available on what? Discord, Twitter, YouTube? Where are some of your guys' outlets that the audience right now can go ahead and start to follow you guys, start to subscribe and all that good stuff? Yeah, the community can find our Twitter and Discord. We value these socials too much, yeah. All right, all right. So that's it, folks. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Again, make sure y'all check out this episode. Until the next time, I am your host, The Wolf of Crypto. This is Mauro, Neon EVM guest. And that's going to wrap it up. And make sure, again, when it comes to crypto, do your own homework, due diligence. This is not financial advice. Until next time, y'all. Peace.